I'm Danny Lipford. And I'm Chelsea Lipford Wolf. Thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a like and a comment. And be sure to share with a friend, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you get notified of new videos. Thanks and enjoy the show. This little house is in need of some curb appeal to help it sell, so we're helping the owners give it a facelift on a very modest budget. You're not worried about what you like, it's what that prospective buyer would like. Right. This little house was Howard and Cam Johnson's first home together as a family. If you look at it now in the front, it's just like bland. It's very boring. The house was built in the 1950s, and when we bought it, there were no updates done whatsoever. Well, it doesn't have a pantry. We broke away the back porch. The electrical needed to be updated. The driveway, is in, it's just really crumbly and old. All the wood floors were damaged. It didn't have a washer and dryer. Yeah, the sun yeah. bleached out the uh, red on the shutters. When we moved in, it was window units. The sewer used to be original concrete. This young couple has invested a lot in this house. We had to do a whole brand new AC um, duct air, work, central pump. air, heat pump, and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's why we added an extra room. We added a pantry too. We had to add a back porch. We even added a garage door. You should have seen it. It's, <laughs> it's like a wooden panel. Yeah. <laughs> it's hideous. Yeah, it was falling apart. So they moved to a larger place across town, but now they really need to sell this one. Everything about it looks mm, old. Very drab. I mean, yeah. Like old style, oldie. Yeah, if the exterior looked a little better, yeah, it would improve the uh, chances of selling the house. So that's our challenge. Find some exterior enhancements we can do on a budget. Now, I know you guys have, um, you know, moved out a little bit, trying to sell the house, looking for some ways to kind of make the front pop a little bit more. What kind of ideas did you have? The color, obviously. Um, I wasn't going to say anything about the color. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of my friends are like, oh, the pink house, and the pink house in the corner. Well, there's, there's definitely some improvements there that could be made to make it, because at this point, you're not worried about what you like. It's what that prospective buyer would like. Right. Mm -hmm. So something a little neutral, something rich, something a little more modern looking can yes. help on that. Uh, what about the wrought iron? What do you think about the wrought iron? I feel that it's a little it should, dated. It's just really old. Surprisingly, people really still like wrought iron, oh. uh, but in more traditional mm -hmm. colors, darker uh, colors. Yeah. Uh, you got a nice bush there and you got a great established um, shrubs here. We might want to do a little trimming of that. That's, that'll be easy. but. The shutters, and, and especially like the gable areas like that, so popular back in the 50s yeah. or whatever, not so much not. now. And also people think about the the uh, maintenance on this, and well, that's actually aluminum siding, isn't it? Yes, yes. Well, yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. We can uh, we don't want to touch it. You don't see aluminum very much. Mm -hmm. It's mostly vinyl siding these days, but we can use some other vinyl components to enhance the look of it, maybe choose some color, maybe try to get some of this um, monotone look out of it, you know, where you have everything is white. Maybe throw in some other colors. We can do this pretty easy. I can also think about the um, the driveway ceiling. That's pretty easy. Yeah, it has a lot of cracks and holes everywhere. Mm -hmm. And also that light fixture right there. Yeah. I don't know. You notice? Well, yeah, that's original, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I've been there since the house was built. Yeah. Yeah. That that all of that can help out. I'll tell you what. You know, a very simple plan can make a big, big difference when you're talking about you know, a house like this. It's not very big. That's good. Yeah. Uh, we can do a little pressure washing, a little ceiling, a few little you know, exterior enhancements on the overall part of it. And I think even we can work with this with the right color. I think we can make a big difference here in just two or three days. Mm -hmm. Wow. Can you, can, you going to help us? Yeah. Absolutely. To update the appearance and keep it low maintenance, we're looking at vinyl materials from Royal Building Products. Their online design tool, HomePlay, allows you to experiment with different style and color options. We settled on the Portsmouth Shake Style for Howard and Cam's place in a slightly more neutral color than what's there now. But before it goes up, there's some cleanup to be done. The first thing we want to do is to tackle the driveway. So if you guys can use a pressure washer to clean that. Have you ever used a pressure washer before? No, sir. Oh, perfect. 
perfect. <laughs> She'll show you all about it, and you guys can work on that. Now, Howard, are you familiar with this particular tool? Yeah, I think I am. Perfect. We'll let you knock down the grass, and I'm going to show Alan all about how to trim edges. Alan, come here. Let me show you how to. Let me You're show you. Show yeah, me. I'm going to show you how. Come on here. We got some good tools here for you. All right, Cam. The first thing to power washing is you have to hook up the water supply first. It's the most important part. So we'll hook it up here, and then we have to turn it on before we crank up the power washer. All right, so you might want to bring it like, bring the green tip like that far away from the asphalt. While the guys are hard at the mowing and trimming, Alan makes a little discovery. Oh, look at there. That's a sure sign that spring is sprung. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Our pressure washing crew must be making progress, though, because my daughter appears to be wearing most of the driveway dirt. Just trimming these hedges already made a big difference in the look of this place. Great, and I tell you what, we've got some enthusiastic homeowners. Oh, I over think here. so. I mean, they jumped right on it. They were ready to get a few things done here. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. She's picking up that power washing pretty I think well. She likes it. Get that a lot cleaner. <laughs> Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh no. <laughs> That's wrong. That's wrong. Hey, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Every homeowner's toolbox should have at least a couple of chisels used for rough construction work and demolition work. The problem is because of that kind of rough handling, the chisels dull really quickly. Here's a quick way to sharpen them without using a bench grinder or a whetstone or anything like that. All you need is a sheet of sandpaper. This is just typical 100 grit sandpaper you can get at any home center or hardware store and we're gonna use it to sharpen the chisel and put an edge on it. And what your first thing you notice is that there's a bevel on the front of the chisel, and we wanna maintain that bevel. So just set the chisel bevel down, tip it up to you feel it's resting flat on the bevel. Then just stroke it back and forth across the sandpaper. It doesn't take long just to put that edge back on there. And then feel the back of it with your th thumbnail. If you feel it's catching on an edge, that's a burr from the metal rolling over. To eliminate that, just hold the chisel flat down with the bevel up and go back and forth a couple of times until it's gone. There you go. Razor sharp and as good as new. We're helping Howard and Cam make over the front of their home so they can sell it more quickly. Howard is mowing the lawn and the ladies are still cleaning the driveway, but the hedges are done, so it's time to start removing some of the home's more dated details. Goodbye, 1950. Came around the corner, Cam says, he just broke my heart taking those shutters down. I don't really do now. <laughs> Before we can install the new siding over the gable, we need a platform to reach it, if we can decide on how to put it together. So two stages up. I think two stages. But single, I mean with three? Yeah, three. You don't have three. Come out, three on each. Oh, three boards? No, three of these. Three on the bottom, three on the top. You only got four. Right. Do you know what you're doing? Yeah. All right, what are you doing? I'm putting scaffolding up. So you're going to put two. Two and two. All right, let's do that first. Let's do two first. All right. Eventually, we get it figured out so Howard and Allen can remove the old wood gable vent and begin attaching the mounting and trim strips that will secure the new vinyl siding. In a gable like this, there are a yeah, lot of right, angle right, cuts right. to be made, so finding and marking that angle is key. All right, now we want to put this piece running this way. Mm -hmm. There we go. And what we're going to do is mark our angle. Mm -hmm. This angle will be repeated each time the siding meets the roof line. The interlocking design of these panels makes them extremely sturdy. In fact, they can withstand winds up to 160 miles an hour. Oddly enough, the roofing nails that secure them are not driven all the way down. This allows the panels to move slightly as they expand and contract without bowing or warping. Since the driveway is dry now, we can start making our repairs to it. Well, I tell you what, now that we have it all clean, it's really in a lot worse shape than I thought it was in. There's a lot of cracks in here. We might not get it perfect, but it's definitely going to look a lot better. So this is for the big holes. We'll put that in first. Then the smaller holes we'll use some of the vinyl patch for, and then this is just to fill in as many cracks as we can with a gallon of this. So, um, of course, everybody needs their tools, so this looks like it fits you well. What? And Cam, you probably have never used a tamp. No, sir. So you will absolutely love that. Come here and let me show you how to use it. 
For the larger repairs, we dig out the crumbling pieces of asphalt around the edges and smooth off the soil beneath. The material in this bag contains pieces of aggregate or rocks, so it's much like laying new asphalt without the heat. Ew. <laughs> Does look alive. <laughs> we overfill the holes so when we pack the repair down with the tamp, it will be level with the surrounding asphalt. Wow, that's how you tamp. For the medium sized repairs, we simply trowel on a compound that, for lack of a better term, is like spackling for asphalt. In the smallest cracks, we pour a liquid sealer that levels itself within the space available. Meanwhile, Howard and Allen have made quick progress on the siding, attaching panel after panel until the gable was covered and the new vent could be snapped into place. Now they've moved on to replacing the shutters, but Allen's communication issues seem to have resurfaced. <laughs> <laughs> What Alan's trying to say is that this shutter system from Royal is pretty cool as well. The screws that secure the shutters include washers with an attached cap. So once you drive the screw, you simply snap down the cap to cover the screw head. Howard, you think these are a little better than those uh, yeah, uh, old ones? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So at the end of day one, the yard is clean, the driveway is patched. Yeah, and I can't wait for the sealer to get on here. It'll yeah. look awesome and we've already replaced the dated gable and shutters. I think my favorite thing is the gable and the beautiful shutters. So day two starts with plenty of optimism. Looks like a whole new little house. Having a wheelbarrow to help you around in the yard is no new concept, but I'll tell you what, this aero cart by Works has got some new concepts going on. Let's talk about the wheelbarrow first. Yes, actually it has limitless features to offer the homeowner. One that we're actually looking at now is the wheelbarrow. This is great. What's the uh, weight capacity of this? Um, it's actually 300 pounds. Wow, this is sturdy construction. I love the wheels. It's got a, a flat free wheel design, so you don't have to worry about that. Let me show you what it now can do. Watch this. As I stand up, I'm gonna take this up with me. We're gonna lock the stand and the wheels in place down here, and now my wheelbarrow has been converted to a hand truck. A hand truck, now we can actually haul off our appliances. This is fantastic, or move big pots around the patio. This is also great for working out in the yard too because we've got this little attachment. Pop that into place, and now you've got a holder for your leaf bags so you can rake your leaves all by yourself. I'll tell you what, Shay, this is pretty impressive. Yes, and this is just a few features that this cart has to offer. It's awesome. We're adding some curb appeal to this 50s era home for owners Cam and Howard, who are trying desperately to sell it. Now it's time to wake up the entryway. What color paint did you pick out? Well, it's like a crimson red. Originally, these rails <laughs> were supposed to That's be. That's a bold choice then. Yeah, I think it'll just, you know, stand out and it'll make the home really inviting. Yeah, so we'll lightly sand it. So that sound is excruciating. Oh no. You know how it sounds like chalkboard fingernaily, and I hate that sound. And that's why I'm, oh, it's just <laughs> creepy. So is that for real or is she just making that up to get out of work? <laughs> she's not shirking because once the sanding is done, she's back at work cleaning to prepare for paint. Now, I mean, I know it's a soffit, man, but you got to admit, that looks a heck of a lot better than that. What do you think? Oh, I think so, too. Yes. All right, good. Let's do it. I'll get the construction adhesive. Okay. So we use a few screws to hold the vent in place until the adhesive dries, and this inexpensive fix is complete. That is red paint. Nice. Thank you for putting that thing underneath there. My wood floor would have been crazy nasty. <laughs> You've got a lot of paint on that brush. So while the ladies finish the first coat on the door. So do we have to let it dry before we paint on the second one? Yeah. Okay. We're prepping the handrails for paint. You know, usually when we're preparing wrought iron to paint, it can be quite a chore because usually people just don't sand it down properly. But whoever painted this nice, delightful color here did a great job on the prep. So it won't take as long to do just a little bit of sanding, wiping it down, and it's going to look a lot better with two coats of brown paint instead of whatever color this is. For the most part, a light sanding will do the job, but occasionally we use a wire brush attachment on a drill to smooth out any stubborn spot. When it's all smooth and clean, we begin masking off the adjacent areas. Need help? <laughs> no, no, you enjoy yourself there. 
Oh, I wasn't going to help you. I was going to find you some help. Oh, you were going to find me some help. Okay, gotcha. For detailed metal work like this, spray paint is the way to go because it allows you to cover all the grooves and crevices with a smooth, even coat of paint. And everyone is glad to see the last of the Pepto paint. Man, that squeegee looks good in your hands right there. Have you ever tried using one of those? Uh, not for this application. Yeah, I know. I've cleaned windows a lot, but I really haven't used it on a driveway very much. But we'll pour it out and then just a good thin layer over everything. Driveway's not going to be perfect, but it's going to look and work a whole lot better. So you go first. There you go. The squeegee takes some getting used to, but it does a great job spreading the thick sealer evenly over the surface. Oh, yeah, works pretty good. Gonna take a lot of it though, isn't it? When Chelsea and Cam finish the foundation paint, the front door is ready for a second coat. While Chelsea does that, Cam is giving the rest of the house a good cleaning. She's using a new tool we discovered recently from Hyde Tools. It's called the Pivot Pro Water Wand, and it conveniently combines the application of water, liquid detergent, and scrubbing power in one package. Once you dial in the appropriate amount of detergent, you can direct it or rinsing water exactly where you want it by sliding the pivot handle back and forth. For scrubbing, there are a variety of attachments which can be locked into eight different positions depending on the job at hand. In fact, there's even a microfiber pad that's ideal for washing windows, cars, or boats. Meanwhile, Alan's replacing that ancient light fixture on the porch with something a little newer and hanging an accent piece on the front wall with a little help from Cam. I think you should scoot over because I think you should be vertical up and stop. That looks swell. A little bit lower. A little bit lower. Move it over a tiny bit to the left. 94 degrees. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I changed my mind. I think it should be... No, it's done. <laughs> should be a little bit lower. <laughs> So the house is finished. Now with the help of Howard and Cam's children. Be fun. Oh. We're going to dress up the landscaping with a few flowers. So this house is ready to show off and sell.